For over 70 years, farmers have been pressured to make agriculture and food production more and more industrialized. Through intensive plowing and heavy use of chemical fertilizers, our soils are being left sterile with little or no biodiversity. These industrial farming techniques cause massive degradation and compaction of our soil, contributing to flooding, water pollution and erosion. We've been losing land area, essentially from erosion, at the rate of about 10 million, 7 to 10 million hectares per year, which is almost the size of Portugal. You could see from satellite vast amount of topsoil leaving the United Kingdom into the ocean. All over the world, farmers are developing an alternative system to regenerate soil instead of degrading it. To protect and increase water retention by covering soil with mulch and by growing continuous diverse crops without tilling or plowing. It's called regenerative agriculture, which includes no-till farming. We owe our entire existence on this planet to a six-inch layer of soil and the fact that it rains. We erode those soils so we can't produce food. So if we can find a, a, an agricultural system that is more friendly to soils, it's ultimately going to be a benefit for the farmers and for wider society. It's only because of the UK's temperate climate that our soil has been so resilient. But for how long? It was the Dust Bowl in 1930s America that highlighted the problems caused by disturbing the soil and popularized the no-till movement. Healthy soil needs minimal disturbance, so no plowing, constant coverage with living roots, diverse species and crop rotation, ideally including livestock grazing. Our soil is actually a habitat and it's got infrastructure, just like a city does. It's got underground tunnels that are super highways. It's got the mycorrhizal hyphae in there, which are really the um, fiber optic cables that are communicating with all the plants and networking them all so they're all talking to one another. So the idea being that when you are standing on your soil, you're really standing on the rooftop of this other world. And, and you as a farmer have the ability to destroy this other world, or you can nurture it and culture it and, and make it great. Agriculture is responsible for nearly 20% of the carbon emissions that affect global warming. But with regenerative farming, carbon can be locked up within the soil and remains in the ground as organic matter, feeding the plants and microbes that nurture the soil. Cover crops like beans are also used to fix nitrogen into the soil, reducing the need for chemical fertilizer. The trouble is we're using less chemicals, less fertilizer, less machinery to do it. And, and all the chemical companies and the fertilizer companies and the machinery companies are advising the government on, 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 on where agricultural policy should go. If you take no-till, the sort of next logical step is how do we use plant species to manage weeds so that we suppress them before they actually get established. And thinking about rather than growing single species, we're always growing multiple species, but using them to do different functions. So suppress weeds or fix nitrogen. And it's all about managing all of those things. And the other key thing is bringing in livestock. If you have a mixed enterprise, something that might not turn out to be a cash crop from a cereal perspective, actually is perfectly good as a forage crop for livestock. Mob grazing allows cattle to live entirely on a diet of grass while fertilizing the soil. It allows diverse plant species to grow that are not only better grazing for the animals, but add to the organic matter in the soil. On their natural diet, the cows are healthier and need less intervention. John Cherry was so inspired by what he was seeing on his farm, he and his family started an annual regenerative agriculture conference the first of its kind in the United Kingdom. This event is a terrific example. People flock here because they want to do it. The machinery is out there now, and we started, I think there were two manufacturers of no-till drills, and there'll be 10 or 15 here demonstrating. It was great because we had uh, really good speakers. We, we could share ideas between farmers, and uh, it was very interesting. 
I think we've got here a good foundation of ideas and people, and it's truly coming from the ground up. Globally, 12.5% of the world's arable land has been converted to no-till agriculture. The revolution is underway.